the college football experience week zero preview and draft episode on the sports gambling podcast networks presented by win bet when bets now live in Arizona, Colorado, Indiana, Louisiana, Massachusetts, Michigan, New Jersey, New York, Tennessee, and Virginia from boosted same game parlays to live in game odds. Win bet is what you need to win bet a hundred dollars. Get a hundred dollars at winbet.com or download the win bet app and start winning today. State restrictions. Restrictions apply. We're also brought to you by the Sports Gambling Podcast Final Four Watch Party. Yes, this Saturday, come sweat out your bets and win prizes with myself, Stack of the Money Green, and Real Money Kramer from the Sports Gambling Podcast over on the YouTube for the Sports Gambling Podcast. Yes, youtube.com slash sports gambling podcast. So check it out and remember to let it ride. Plus, uh, make sure you fill out our listener survey for a chance to win a $100 SGPN gift card. Just go to sports gambling podcast.com slash survey. And remember as always, just like I said before folks to let it ride. Hey everybody, Jim McMahon here and you're listening to S G P N let it ride. Are you excited? Are you not entertained? Uh, I am joined. Uh, actually, no, I guess you're probably wondering who the hell you're listening to. So I guess it'd be a good time for me to explain that my name is Colby Swinging Dantabase Dant, a.k.a. Pick Don D. That's not a pick. This is a pick. He was raised in the land down under where a man thinks on his feet, speaks with his fists, and lives by his wits. I'm probably drinking too much and celebrating too much and not sleeping. Uh, would have killed a normal man, but uh, uh, that's gone. The medical advice I got from that was was like being hit by lightning. Pretend it never happened and get on with your life. Uh, and you're nothing but a chameleon, lemon-headed, coward, terrorist pussy. And I'm after you, buddy. You're going to pay for it. Good night. <laughs> Durko says I'd be a great wrestling commentator along with college shoots. Hey, college oh, look. Uh, wrestling was cool in the 80s. I'm out now. All right. I'm out now. Just football, basketball. Let's go. Give me all the jobs. Let's just create content. I don't know. Damn it. I'm excited for week zero. I think you might have Jim Ross kind of vibes here a little bit. Rick Ross kind of vibes. Rick right. Ross. There you go. All right. I think Jim I Ross was cooler. <laughs> I don't know. Interesting. I'd like to. Uh, I'd like to see who would do. You know, spend some time with both. See which one was cooler. That'd be a fun yeah. night out. Rick yeah. Ross and Jim Ross. <laughs> uh, I am joined by my co-host. Give it up for former former JMU Duke defensive back, the burrito eating sideline kiss stealing wheeling and dealing Patty C in the place to be. Hi. Well. First down. All right. And we are joined by third man in the booth. The DFS got himself. Give it up for a rooftop IPA drinking home brew making tobacco road living the free lock given former former Herndon basketball league MVP. Give it up for NC Nick in the place to be. There we go. What's going on guys. I love these. <laughs> well, these previews well, well, yeah, I don't get I'm sorry. I cut you off there. Say I'm it again. Saying I love these previews that we do, man. I'm, I'm pumped for this. This is like, you know, it, it marks a date and time where we start thinking college football. Like we start really focusing in. Yeah. And shout out to Todd. He goes, I can't fucking talk, but what's up? Fellas, I can't wait to see what you have in store for college football. You better believe we have everything in store for college football, folks. Uh, Moneyline Mac. 
you should uh, check out his NFL gambling podcast and the college basketball experience. He's in the chat. He says, we need more week zero games. I agree. True Trumpy story. bear in the chat says this show is fantastic. And everyone knows it. Amen. <laughs> shout out to you. Trumpy bear. Shout out to Durko, Todd, Ryan, all these, all these Great fine Americans. people. Yeah. Oh, uh, no, Mac well, is completely right. We only have seven games to choose from and really kind of lackluster. I mean, well, uh, what makes week zero week zero? If you have 50 games then it's week one, yeah, how, about, how about double digits? Yeah, right. y- usually we have like the big 10 matchup in over in Ireland or England or something. <laughs> yeah, Give me, give us two marquee games. Give us at least one big ass game each like what, yeah. Friday and Saturday. Or would it be Saturday yeah, and Sunday? Yeah, uh, yeah. I or mean, maybe like just Saturday, Saturday here. Well, just they Saturday. should they should be uh, divvying these things up like you know. Uh, in my opinion, like the the NFL still does the preseason games on Sunday, right? You basically have like two weeks. I have t- you basically have week zero, that entire week. Yeah. Week one, that entire week. You yeah, have the like fact two that and a half the NFL weeks. That- shits the bed on the week before Labor Day weekend. Yeah. Or the week after Labor Day. They, they don't they, they they shit the bed on Labor Day weekend. Sorry. There you uh, go. Yeah, college football has has done a good job of taking advantage of that weekend. They spread it out Saturday, Sunday, spread, Monday. No, they, they don't do a good job in my opinion. One game on Labor Day is they pathetic. They could do better. Yeah. yeah they, they, like, they could do better. And and the, like they should divide it up between all of those weeks and especially knowing that I just read an article from the Athletic uh, a couple of weeks back that the NFL is coming for college football they're coming for black Friday this year, college football. They're playing the NFL games there and you know, they're playing uh, a bunch more the war during on. college football times and college football needs to get organized and say, fuck you back. Because I still believe the average NFL fan is a college football fan. Sure. You know what I mean? So if you make them have to decide between, Hey, I'm going to watch the Jacksonville Jaguars against the Indianapolis Colts, or should I watch Ohio state who I love? Then you put a lot of uh, pressure on them to the side, and I think it could actually hurt the NFL. And a lot of times, like get clever, like start your game like an hour and a half before the NFL game, so people start watching that. Maybe it's a good game. Maybe they get sucked in. Maybe they they finish watching the college game and then flip over to the NFL game. It's yeah. better clever. than having eighty games on Saturday. Yeah, exactly. Let me tell you what, though. There's something a little bit sad about of uh, the college football and the NFL not being able to figure it out. You know, it's called this greed, is buddy. A compatible right. relationship. It's a symbiotic relationship. Let's make it work. Guys. Hold on. I, I think what you're saying is, I think what you're saying is this, buddy. I think <laughs> what you're saying is, uh, uh, I know the human being <laughs> and fish can coexist peacefully. That's kind of what I'm getting at. Yes. Here. yes. I don't know how it's symbiotic. So at, the NFL wants college football to be good. So players, or so so fans know some of the players when they get when they graduate and come into the NFL. Sure. What does college get from the NFL? Uh, I guess uh, the uh, the legacy of the players that played in college football, which uh, <laughs> adds to the tradition of no, uh, no, no, college no, football. No. Hey, I don't know. That, that Tebow tradition was was great in the NFL. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're going to take that one purely Tom, college Tommy football. Frazier was one of the best quarterbacks ever in college football. Yeah. <laughs> and what is it? What, what, yeah. nice, there nice has never story been for the a or, great or college or football player that went on to be a great pro football player. They're, they're in the minority. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this. We just talked Ryan Lee earlier today. Me and Nick were, uh, you know. <laughs> Look, 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 I'm going I'm to say this outright right here. I think it's time for me to fucking step and, and make a point here that this, this podcast needs to acknowledge. We are not NFL haters necessarily at heart. We are NFL lovers by birth, right? Yes. Okay. Some things, but let's, let's say, okay, we've made our point. I think, but, I think we've uh, I made mean, our, point. I mean, they are, you know, I still like I'm, the NFL, but it, it I want to love the college NFL. football. Yeah. College football is on another planet. Uh, like I don't dislike, I mean, I don't hate the NFL. Like I'm making the effort yeah. to get back in the NFL. It takes, it, it's taking some work though. Well, ho- hopefully it's more than the Mac preview. All right. <laughs> uh, uh, all right. Look folks, if, if you're brand new to listening to the show, years past, we've done this for the past couple of years. And shout out to, to Moneyline Mac says, handle the Redskins. Amen. Uh, <laughs> but uh, what we do essentially is, is we draft. So this is segment one, week zero. Next week will be week one, and then so on and so on and so on. We'll go through all 15 weeks of the college football season, drafting the best, the top 30 games. Well, for, for this week, only the whatever we have, Seven. because there's not 30 games. Seven. Um, so 
Uh, with that being said, let's jump on the clock. Quick question. So What's I mentioned that? seven. That's FBS. There's also three FCS. Is yep. that is that part two? Is that after, or can we sprinkle those in there? Oh, you can sprinkle them in there wherever. Okay. If you are more compared, like I'll, I'll be honest, like Jackson State's play at South Carolina State. This was a uh, celebration bowl just uh what I feel like uh, not that long ago. ago. Yeah, and uh that's probably a little more compelling than s- some of these other games. Yeah. You know, Patty C's going to try to tell us that Navy Notre Dame is is exciting. But well, that's um, the interesting thing about this week at the FBS level cuz there's a couple premier top-notch programs but those games might be blowouts. So, yes, I think the average college football fan wants to see how those teams are looking in week zero, but those games may not be the best games. But anyway, what's the order, Colby? Who's going first? Who's going last? Uh, you are, my friend. You're going to lead the way yeah. oh, look at that. into the light. I opened it up last year. I feel like we just rotate it and, okay. uh, you know, fire away with the, you know, you, what you are. What is the game week zero that you're just sitting there saying, I cannot wait to watch this game. Don't laugh at me, but I'm not going to go with one of the TMZ games. I'm not going to go with the USC or the Notre Dame game. I'm going to go with, I think is the most intriguing matchup and probably the best game. And that is the Ohio Bobcats traveling down to sunny Southern California to uh, face the Aztecs of San Diego state. Oh, I completely, I actually think I had this as my game that I want to see most because I think this is going to be a very good game. The whole entire game. Hipsters. Mm. I just think, <laughs> I, I honestly think, look, Ohio should have won the Mac last year. Their yes. quarterback got injured. They played for the Mac championship, San Diego state. We were watching what their basketball programs doing the pack. 12. I, I do expect an announcement in the coming weeks that they're going to be joining the pack 12. Really? Yeah. I, I think that's I, I think that's a no brainer at this point. If the Pac-12 fumbles this, then they they don't deserve to be a is fucking that just Pure Colby, like fucking. No, I really expect that. Do you have any source or anything? Yes, I I from what I understand. I, oh, I think don't this let is me don't happen. get me started on sources. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think this is going to happen in the next couple of weeks. The only thing that could derail it would be if the Big Twelve snatched up San Diego State. But I think their days as a Mountain West. Uh, if they get member, to the national championship, it should be automatic. No, I think it's happening regardless right yeah, now. Yeah, it probably should. Regardless. Matter, yeah. It probably yeah. should. Yeah. Uh, I think it's the most compelling game on this whole fucking slate. Ohio well, look, at San Diego looking State. at Ohio. So Tim, Tim Albin, the head coach got the extension. There was rumors. He might go to a couple different programs. Didn't happen. I'm glad he stayed in Athens. And yes, you got Curtis Rourke back at quarterback. You got Saya Bangura, the 1000 yard running back back. He's from Bowie, Maryland. Shout out to Bowie. We got some family in Bowie, Maryland. Bowie, Bowie, Bowie. Bowie, Maryland. That's right. And then um, <laughs> the leading receiver, Sam Wigloos, who had 875 yards and 11 touchdowns is back. You also. love that guy in DFS. I, that was your I guy. rostered him often. So, dude, this Ohio team is ready to rock. Yeah. yeah. I it, played college ball with a guy named Junior Bangura. I just looked up the uh, origins of the name West African. It means warrior. That dude hit like a motherfucker at JMU. <laughs> the Bangura name, I've just noticed in general, is uh, some it's ballers. flourishing. It's flourishing. flourishing. Yeah. Look, I think you're right. I think you you did do the game that I want to see most. Patty C, you are now on the clock. That's a good game. Yeah, let I, me, think, let me... I think that's probably going to be the closest game out of all of these. If I had to bet, <sighs> let's play uh, that game a little bit more too, because I think San Diego State's appealing because Hoke does want to change the offensive style. Their offense was putrid for the first half of last year. Finally, they switched over from from Braxton Burmeister. I don't know why they brought him in there. The transfer from, from Virginia Tech, uh, <laughs> he's awful, and uh, they got some things going with Jalen Maiden once he took over the reins at quarterback. So, yes, I don't. We all don't agree with his philosophy of changing the offensive style, but they did get some things going on offense, and we'll see if they can continue that into this year. Yeah, no, I think I think it is honestly the. Uh... The game that I th- and and we should consider going to this Patty C because I I just think it's going to be a a good game here. Uh, Ohio, uh, what, um, seven and one in conference play. The one loss being a uh, road game in overtime, yeah. and then they lost the uh, MAC championship against Toledo. Uh, Ohio Curtis Rourke, they're a pretty fucking good team. San Diego State, obviously the snapper, not what we thought it would be. Uh, could they go in there and get a dub week one? They could. I think, zero, game. Sure. I, think it's, I think it's a game. I think it's a game, dude. I think it's a fascinating game. All right, Patty C. Look, you're going to paint me as this TMZ guy for taking the fucking obvious, most compelling game. We got 
Notre Dame's <laughs> most played fucking rival of all time in oh. Ireland. We're going to Ireland. Look, like, we're all it, a fucking mix here. Like, is it a uh, rivalry when they're when the record's 79 13 overall and they've never played in Annapolis? Have they never ever played in Annapolis? <laughs> Good wow. God, that's bad. <laughs> that's not a rivalry when you've yeah. never played at the other team <laughs> stadium. <laughs> okay, touche. But even so, uh, it's kind of cool because it's in Ireland. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, you know, my sister married an Irishman. Maybe I'll fucking find my way out to Dublin for this one. Um, no, Notre no, Dame. No, no. <laughs> well, you never know. You never know. Yeah. Um, she invites me with cheap tickets and some drinks. I'll, I'll be there. Um, look, is Sam Hartman going to be the guy? Is this a, a, a banner season for Notre Dame? Uh, Marcus Freeman year two. Okay. He kind of figured it out. He stumbled at the beginning year uh, end of the season. He kind of became a strong program. They get Ohio state at home. They get USC at home. They got a, a Clemson on the road late, but whatever they could get that win. Notre Dame is a threat this year, whether you fucking accept it or not. And this, and I feel like there's a good luck charm at the beginning of the season when they play in Ireland. So regardless of whether Navy's competitive with their new coach, it's kind of a cool game. Yeah. And you're talking about Brian Newberry, the new head coach in Annapolis. Yeah. I don't know. I don't fi- like this game's further down to me. It's further down to me. It's I not actually think be a good is, game. I think it's one of the ones I want to watch least. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. I mean, I want to see Sam Hartman, you know, yeah. for Notre Dame. I want to see what he does there. We, we, we mentioned that. Yeah. It's great to bring him in. He's probably the best quarterback since geez. I mean, he's probably better than Deshaun Kaiser or Everett Golson. I mean, that's arguable, I guess. You know, probably since Brady Quinn. He's Arguably, sure. Uh, who are they going to throw the ball to? We're, we're still not really sure. Uh, Matthew Mayer, the tight end, is gone. They did get Caleb Smith, a transfer from Virginia Tech, who who caught like what six hundred fifty uh, yards, a couple touchdowns last year. He's he's decent, but they have a good quarterback. the The O line there is always fine. We just don't yeah. know who he's going to pass the ball to. That's true. Uh, and yeah, Patty was right. I mean, Notre Dame was three and three at one point in mid October last year, and had just lost at home to Stanford. 16 14. Yeah. So things were looking very, very shaky in Marcus's Freeman first first year. And then they went six and one to close the year. But they lose Tommy Reese. They have a brand new OC, you know, who they promoted with him sure. from tight end coach after uh Andy Ludwig had turned them down. Uh oh, they beat uh Clemson in the bowl game, who or uh, South Carolina, who in the previous two games had beaten Clemson and uh Tennessee. Yeah, so I don't, I don't think South Carolina was that great though. Yeah, you're a beamer hater, you're a beamer. I, I don't downer. think half the team played either. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Correctly. Quoting a bowl game is Details. like Yeah. I don't you it, can't it's really an intriguing matchup. I, I, I would have played this second or third personally, so I think it's cheer right cheer spot. for old Notre Dame. Mm. Right? Wake up the echoes. Mm. So this is where it was an interest. What's that? What, your pick. Oh, okay. With pick three, pick Dundee is taking you all the way to Las Cruces. No, uh, I'm, I'm going. It's, and I thought about it. I thought about it, guys. I'm, I'm, I, I gotta go. I gotta go with uh, San Jose State at USC. Yeah. yeah. Um, San Jose State has has built winning culture there. And USC, you know, they do a return Caleb Williams, but let's be honest, that defense was trash last year. So I don't expect San Diego State to win this game, but I do think San Jose State. What did I say? San San Diego State. Yeah, Yeah, San Jose State to win this game, but I do think that it's a compelling game because San San Jose State returns a lot. They return a lot. Seven and five, better than I thought they were last. Dude, they they should have beat Auburn at Auburn. They were right there. That's what I'm saying. Like you're sleeping on them. That look at their losses. Uh, they lose one score game to Auburn, one score game to Fresno, one score game to Utah State. They almost, uh, you know, had a pretty solid season there with like ten wins. I, I think they can. Cord- Cord- Cordero's back at quarterback. Um, mm. This could be a little tricky game here. Super at senior the, at the Coliseum. Now, uh, if anything, San Jose State's defense I actually was impressed with last year. The question is, can their offense, you know, yeah. put put up some numbers against USC? So. I think that's got to be game three, even though I, I, I got to be honest, man. I almost played that game in Las Cruces or that game in Alabama <laughs> over this one. Uh, I think oh, it, it's compelling just because it's an in-state battle too. in-state battle USC five and O oh all time. Uh, 
hasn't won a game by less. Well, there was a game back in 2001 that was only, or shit, 2000 and 2001. The games were decided by 10 and 11 points, respectively. There you go. So this Let's game, go. it could be tight. Let's and go. Brent Brennan is the best coach at uh, San Jose State in quite a while. Yeah, right? since Jack Elway. All right. Come on. Uh, well, all right. You would have went full blown hipster if you didn't choose this game because it has to be played here. I think the the Caleb William Heisman tour starts here. I think that's one reason to watch right there. People want to see how good USC is after going eleven and three, but losing their last two games last year. And San Jose State is interesting. I mean, COVID year they went seven and one. They looked really good, and then since then five and seven, seven and six, kind of you know mediocre. So this has blowout potential, but it's still a it's still a, an intriguing matchup, uh, dude. I've seen USC come out in the Coliseum Week One and score like twenty one points in the first three minutes of the game. I feel like I've seen that a lot. Rice last year, yeah. Uh, shout out to Dick Gertzberger yeah. says I'm a Sun Devil and I'm ar- I'm already accepting the invitation to the Vegas Bowl. There we go. <laughs> uh, uh, one of the ones Patty C was excited about as he went to sleep last night. Uh, I'm excited uh, about it all. <laughs> You hate, you hate, but you're excited too. Don't lie. Not the bowl games, though. I hate bowl games. Death to all bowl games. Uh, (laughs) Look, folks, I want to tell you that the college football experience is brought to you by WinBet. Yes, WinBet is the official online sportsbook of the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, and WinBet's now active in Massachusetts and a ton of other states. Be on the lookout for WinBet's win hour each Thursday from 5 to 6 uh, p.m. Eastern time. During during, uh, WinBet's win hour, marquee games of the week will have better odds on uh, WinBet, giving you a larger payout opportunity. And March Madness is here. There's so many ways to win on the big dance and the final four. Sign up today to receive a special offer. Bet $100, get $100. Limited to state availability. And, of course, for our GGs only, if you hit the biggest long shot parlay of the week, you get $1,000 free credit. There's so much to choose from, and all you have to do is head over to winbet.com or download the WinBet app. Offer subject to change service and condition. Winbet.com must be 21 or order present state where WinBet is available. If you or somebody you know has a gaming problem, call 1-800-522-4700. We're also brought to you by SGP Masters. Yeah, looking to hang out with Sean and Ryan at Stadium Swim and watch the biggest uh, golf tournament in the world. Yes, you can win a three-night stay at Circa Las Vegas to hang with the guys. The contest is completely free to enter. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash golf party, and if you don't win the contest, you get a discount on your – you can still get a discount on your room using the promo code SGP15. Also, what are you doing this Saturday? I can tell you what you should be doing. You're going to be watching the Final Four one way or another, but you might as well hang out and watch it with us because we are going – virtual come hang out with the guys on their YouTube channel for the entire Saturday of final four action, live bets, prize giveaways, and much, much more subscribe. Just go to youtube.com slash the color or slash uh, sports gambling podcast and tune in on Saturday. And remember as always to let it ride. All right. We are back week zero preview and picks. I want to ask you a question. I think we've glossed over these real quickly here. Is Sam Hartman the best quarterback since uh, Brady Quinn at Notre Dame, or do we give Deshaun Kaiser and really Everett Colson the credit they deserve? You have expressed to me privately, Colby, that you think Sam Hartman might be a bit of a system quarterback. Mm. I do, I do. Uh, Always Jamie- boy, Always boy too. Well, mm. I think Dave Clawson's thing we saw with Jamie Newman. There's a reason he's playing, trying to play tight end. You think Jamie Newman <laughs> will be able to play in the USFL, CFL, or XFL, and he can't. And uh, you know, I think that's a QB friendly offense. The slow mesh sure. you would not yeah. think of necessarily as a QB friendly offense, but it is. They, it is, they air sure. it out too, though. I mean, well, a lot oh, of wide receiver happened. screens and stuff too. Yeah. Like, I mean, you could pad the stats well, there. Well, the slow mesh uh, basically neutralizes the linebacker. It it slows them down to the point where you can create enough space between the linebacker where you put those middle guys in a position uh, in a compromised position. You got to play the run. You got to play the pass and they, they manipulate the pass with it. Yeah. Yeah. So it's quarterback. Well, I, I guess. I mean, Kaiser and Golson, correct me if I'm wrong. Both took Notre Dame to playoffs. Yeah. Or was Golson I, before the, no, no, no. Well, I don't it, know if Kaiser he, he and took, book took him to the playoffs. Book right? did, but he's oh, okay. Was that what was a book? But maybe Hartman and You're book right. are more similar than, yeah, Mark. I think that's probably, I mean, I mean they're totally it, different quarterbacks, but yeah, I guess but it's I, hard to say Heisman is better until he does something at Notre Dame. Well, another thing too is Hartman thought he was going to have Tommy oh, Reese. Remember he committed with Tommy Reese, Tommy Reese yeah. then leaves. Yeah. So I don't know how, how fluid that situation will be. Come day one in Dublin, Ireland. Other thing, sorry, real quick. Uh, is uh, is Caleb Williams uh, going to start a Heisman campaign here? Sure. 
Yeah. You think he's going to get it this year? Well, he got it last year. The mix. Oh, yeah. He did get it last year. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> a little rusty here, yeah. folks. Well, rusty. that doesn't mean he'll get <laughs> it this year. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> what is he, Archie Manning? Go up. <laughs> Shout out to Dick Gersberg. He said, I had no idea you guys were doing a live show during the weekend for the Final Archie Four. Griffin. He Archie says, Manning. I will Holy be shit. there. All right. Let's go. Uh, all right, NC Nick. All right. <laughs> I will take you to the game being played in and the great state of Alabama that you alluded to earlier, and that is Jacksonville, Alabama, UTEP at Jacksonville State. This game is intriguing for a couple of reasons. First off, it's a conference game in the in the new look CUSA, and it's Jacksonville State's first game as an FBS team. I mentioned in the pod they're going to destroy your little miners. I think it's going to be no. I think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to be an an interesting game, but yeah, we got Rich Rod. Uh, he's going to have a new quarterback because bo- both quarterbacks from last year are gone, but he's got a really good running back. He's got four offensive linemen returning, and this is the team that beat Florida State in 2021, beat FIU in 2020, so they have experience beating FBS teams, but like I mentioned, UTEP has been solid. Dana uh, Dim has done a great job there. They went bowling two years ago. Last year, they went five and seven, almost got there again. And Gavin Hardison is back for his fifth year at quarterback. So I think this is a very interesting game. I love it too. I got to be honest. This almost beat the San Jose State USC game. And I, 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 I mean, the only thing is, I think there is a chance Jacksonville State. These fans will be packed. I think there's a chance they could pour it on UTEP, just like USC could pour it on San Jose. Really? I do. Well, that. That much, uh, come on. I mean, USC, the blow potential is much higher in that game than UTEP at Jacksonville State. Sure, but I think Jacksonville State's going to fuck them up. I think they're going to fuck them up, man. Really? I do. I, I think it's going to be like 35 14 or something. Jacksonville State routed a bunch of teams last year. Not they're in- good. T- it would have made the FCS playoffs if they were eligible. By them going to the FBS, they said they, they were ineligible for the playoffs. I do love them jumping up because I think this, this program has a lot of potential. Yeah, I think they're gonna fuck up Utah. Yeah, let me tell you this: Rich Rodriguez's uh, experience going from year one to year two. Uh, Glenville State one and seven, year two four and five, uh, three game improvement. But and by year four ten and three, uh, West Virginia three and eight, nine and four, year two. Uh, Michigan three and nine, five and seven, seven and six, and then Arizona eight and five, and then ten and four by year three. He's going to improve as he gets his system in place, right? Nine and two at the FCS level is a respectable like year. Yeah. If he gets his people in place for year two, are they going to have a big jump? Is this going to be a tough fucking team to deal with? I think so. Dude, how about, how about group of five in the state of Alabama, Troy, South Alabama, Jacksonville state. That's pretty nasty. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty nasty. Yeah. Hey, California, maybe you should bring back Long Beach State, you filthy horse. All right. Uh, yeah. 30, 40 million people and four fucking teams. Yeah. Right. Sacramento guess, State. Yeah, yeah. Five or six. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, you got a few, but still, they should do more. They should do a lot more than they used to. But uh, yeah, you know, tough times. Anyway, Patty C. I mean, the temptation to do a. Uh, a third iteration of the Jackson state, South Carolina state uh, celebration bowl to open the season is tempting, but guess who's gone. Dion, the most important part of that. Uh, So I'm going to take you, I'm going to take you to a revenge spot where I think that you, you guys, uh, you guys said it was easy money last year that Clark Lee was going to fuck up. Uh, Timmy Chang and the Hawaii Rainbow Warriors. I think revenge is is a dish best served cold. And Timmy Chang has been freezing this dish for a whole year, <laughs> and he's going to serve it to Clark Lee's ass in in uh, Tennessee. Oh, he's going Hawaii at Vanderbilt in Nashville. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I mean, that, what was that final to score? ten? Sixty three to ten last year. Vandy ran for over four hundred yards. Look, the, the air raid isn't well equipped to stop a, a powerful running attack, but oh, what a difference one year makes! I think I, I will say Hawaii did improve throughout the season. Yes. To Timmy, to, to, to Timmy Chang's credit, they improved throughout the year, and maybe he can keep it more respectable against the Commodores. I in just Nashville. feel like you talk about Hawaii coaches. You had uh, Todd Graham, 
You had uh, Rolovich. Rolovich. You had June Jones. June Jones. They're made to throw the ball around. Hawaii inherently has athletes. I don't Not know. Not when they know. had Paul Johnson as an OC and Dick Tobin. Sure, they can yeah. run the ball too. Yeah. Island fucking breeding. Island genetics are different. You get enough time to get this shit together. Hawaii is. It's an uh, uh, it's an anomaly that these people aren't dominating the sport of football. Nick, well, what do you what do you make of this one? It's a decent game, I guess. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's hard to say a game that was sixty three to ten last year, but it will be closer. <laughs> it will be closer this year, even <laughs> if it Craspin has a little bit here. But uh, uh, and also, I mean, part of that huge running game was Mike Wright, the running quarterback of Vandy, who I think ran for like one forty or one fifty. He is gone, transferred to Mississippi State. AJ Swan, I think, who who took a lot of snaps, kind of took over from Mike Wright towards the end of last year. He is not a dual threat, so whatever. So I, Vandy's not going to run for as many yards. The game should be a little bit closer, but I still think. I mean, Clark Lee is doing a good job, and Vandy's getting better, so I think they probably take care of business. I think so too. I mean, right. he he's got them rolling. Look, look, the slate is just not that. <laughs> Hawaii, compelling hey, this week. Could be a new quarterback for the Rainbow Warriors too. That that pit transfer, uh, uh, Yellen. He might oh, yeah. be the starting quarterback. Timmy there. Chang's yeah. gonna get his guy. He is gonna get his guy. Um. Well. Uh. Look. Let's hop on over because look. Uh. You know. My next pick. Let me get. We got the Roswell Bowl. All right. <laughs> as much as I wanted to play a Conference USA conference game. I am intrigued and I was spot on with Jerry kill making a bowl in year one at New Mexico state. I think he's got this program really going in the right direction and Don Brown gets year two. So you get UMass. These teams just played each other a couple years back guys. All right. And it was a, it was a fun one that New Mexico state won by 17. All right. Um, but I think this might be a game. Don Brown gets all oh, season to to sit there and say what did we do wrong i'm intrigued by the matchup these only these are two coaches that are wildly more qualified than the jo- jobs they're in right yes. now yes and that's why i mean new mexico state is a i think going to start uh, you want to talk about if san diego state leaves the mountain west watch out for san for new mexico state being a potential one cuz you get that new mexico new mexico state rivalry Geographical footprint yeah. sure yeah uh <laughs> so <laughs> Well, Jerry kill dude. If he imagine you get three or four straight winning seasons here, which I think he can do. Yeah. I think he can do that. So I, even still, I can't imagine the Aggies really gaining a lot of momentum. I think it's going to take like I L my friend. 25 straight winning seasons. N-I-L, before I L my friend, New Mexico state is a thing. I, I well, Boise like, state was a community college in what? 19 fucking 80. And I think the people yeah. in Las Cruces should be excited because much like the other team we mentioned, New Mexico State started off one and five, but then finished six and one. Not only did yeah. they made it, they make a bowl game, they also won a bowl game. And their quarterback play was awful last year. And they have Eli Stowers transferring in from Texas AM. Mm. I, yep. I imagine he's gonna win the job. Yep. And yeah. and how about what he did to Hugh Freeze and Liberty? Yeah. He went into Liberty and won 49 to 14. Now the Lot problem with this points being the made problem here. with this game is that is UMass any better? And they did play at UMass a year ago, and they beat UMass by ten. So I'm sorry, two, the, they've played them twice. Yeah. They've beaten UMass two times in a row. They might go for the, the trifecta here against uh, the Minutemen. The, the question was that game in Massachusetts yeah, last year. Yeah, and now UMass has to take that long trip. Yep. Yeah, UMass only won game. UMass won one game last year, twenty to three over Stony Brook. True. And they, but you know, they they were in it in the Eastern Michigan game. They blew that lead. They were up early. Eastern Michigan stormed back to get the dub. They were in it in the Arkansas State game against Butch Jones, and then they got their ass kicked. Actually, they were in it in the A and M game. That was I know you see twenty to three as a final. That was like ten to three for the entire game. We were watching that whole thing. Jake Pinkman in the chat saying college football Hell chatter yeah. in March. I fucking love it. Amen. Let me let me tell you this. Don Brown has done this little routine. Yeah, he before. was. You, you got to remember, he took UMass to the FCS playoffs several times, I believe. So, uh, you know, I think he got they got the guy, right guy for the job. I'm getting this dialed up right now. Yeah, uh, Don Brown took over UMass in 2004. In 2003, they were well. They actually had a pretty damn good uh, year that year. But he went six and five, seven and four, and thirteen and two. There so year go. three, a year three, the time before. Now uh, one and eleven, year one. 
Can he get it turned around a little faster? If you build it, it will come. New Mexico State minus 10 and a half. Who are you going with? I'm going to Mexico State. Yeah, I think in uh, Las Cruz, I think they're gonna pack this place. I think, uh, I think they're gonna pack this stadium. Let me ask you this: Jerry Kill as the uh, the the narcoleptic uh, head coach at Minnesota, or Don Brown as the Dan Deardorff impression coach, defensive coordinator <laughs> at Michigan? Who has more clout? <laughs> I'd say Kill. 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 I agree with oh, you. Yeah, I think Kill does. Uh. All right. Um, well, look, before we get to the next round here, uh, I want to tell you folks out there that the college football experience is brought to you by underdog fantasy. Yes. Underdog fantasy continues their March madness college pick them. It's a great way to get in on all the action, especially if your brackets busted, which all of ours is uh, plus underdog fantasy is your favorite college basketball player props, which we play all the time. They have great NBA and NHL daily games as well. Head over to underdogfantasy.com. Use the promo code SGPN for hundred percent deposit bonus up to a hundred dollars. That's underdogfantasy.com promo code SGPN. All right. NC Nick. Where are you going? Is it my turn or is it Patty's turn? No, it's your turn. I'm third. All right. Yeah. Cool. Uh, well, let me take it to that CUSA game. And that is uh, another conference game. I guess I'm a huge CUSA guy now. But um, Florida International at La Tech. This is a game that was in overtime last year. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Patty C. McIntyre's <laughs> building it, baby. <laughs> he won four games in his first year, coming off a, a, only a one-win season in 21. So I'd say he did a hell of a job. Yeah, we know we love the running back Lexington Steel Joseph, <laughs> and they're gonna have an interesting QB battle at their hands too. So, um, you know, if anything, not only did FIU win and beat La Tech last year, which was kind of surprising because you thought Sonny Cumbie, the first year head coach of La Tech, walked into a better situation. He did, but, but he can't coach like oh, Mike go. McIntyre. And they, I mean, they. I hope they learned their lesson with fire and skip Holtz when he went down there and won a freedom cup in the USFL. Subscribe to the USFL gambling podcast, which we host <laughs> as well. That's right. Uh, so Cumby only won three games last year. So FIU won more games than La Tech somehow. Yeah. Unbelievable. Considering that he walked into a situation where everyone left the team where they were um, borrowing or they they were using yeah. Auburn's shoulder pads from 12 Mississippi years ago. States. Yeah, Mississippi States. Uh, yeah. He had a little bit of a journey there. Uh, uh, barely beat Brian in overtime week one. Yeah. Lost 73 to nothing at Western Kentucky <laughs> week three, you know, got it turned around. I mean, overtime wins in two out of his three Al almost games. beat middle Tennessee to end the season. That would have been a nice <laughs> win. Are we, are we, no, uh, actually four and eight last year. Yeah. Shit. They're better than I thought. You're right. That's what I'm saying. McIntyre and it's year two of the McIntyre era. He's a, he's a proven winner, former yeah. coach, national coach of the year. Yeah. Two different times. One at San Jose state and one at Colorado, two time national coach of the year yeah. at two different schools. Yeah. How many different coaches in FCS or in FBS that. football can say that now, Nick, I think this game might be closer than the UTEP Jacksonville state game going on in the conference USA the same day. True, but the other game I think is just more appealing to me. But uh, I do think this game's gonna be close for sure. I mean, it went in overtime last year, and this time it's at La Tech. So if you're telling me uh, right now, I mean, this game could be the closest one that we've that we've picked out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. Or maybe maybe the Ohio San Diego State game could could be in the mix also. Yeah, I think that's probably gonna be my, my, what, my what, vote for number one. What day of the week is this game being played on? It's a Saturday. It's week zero, buddy. These are all Saturday. Yeah. yeah. Thank God this is week zero. There's still even with even if it's the only game on TV, there's a ten percent chance this game's on my TV. Ten. I say this as a college <laughs> football fucking really prognosticator. I, I, I gotta be honest. I'd probably rather watch this one than no, Navy Notre Dame. Notre, yeah, that's true. After about. <laughs> Eight minutes of Notre Dame Navy, I might be flipping to this one. Like, yeah, Patty, I'm not gonna lie. It's, I mean, we're we're trying to, you know, put lips <laughs> generate some thing interest here. here. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I actually I, I appreciate how the conference USA is doing conference games week zero. That makes True. it more compelling right there. Agreed. Yep. Absolutely. So what uh, if this game has implications in late November that we never saw coming? Well, they wouldn't because we don't have a real playoff with automatic qualifiers. True. You know, once but again, it could have yeah. CUSA implications. Yeah, but CUSA back here, is wide open this year. Not if you, not if you talk to uh, Jamie Chadwell or Western Kentucky. Oh, 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 or Rich Rodriguez. Who knows? True. Who but, knows? But but with UTSA leaving, it opens a door. Yeah, 
Yeah. Who knew CUSA was so compelling? Not only did UTSA lo- leave, UAB left. Yeah. Florida Atlantic, who's also won the CUSA, left. Uh, the Rice Owls, who I know NC Nick's always high on. They Big left fan. North Big Texas, fan. who's who's won some uh, CUSA or made some appearances in the CUSA championship. Addition by uh, subtraction. There we go. Let's go. All right. Well, uh, Patty C. <laughs> HBCU football didn't just die with Deion Sanders leaving. You know, not at all. One of his assistants, TC Taylor's taking over. That's right. It and existed before Coach Prime and will after Coach Prime. That's right. They brought in Jason Brown, the Virginia Tech slash South Carolina quarterback. He's going to start. And He's look, awful. some of some some of their guys, some <laughs> of their guys, uh, stayed the course. Didn't elect to transfer. That were high recruits that could play at the FBS level and didn't want to. So. I think TC Taylor walks into quite a uh, decent scenario here. Uh, now, at the same time, South Carolina State. That know, was two years ago. This actually, North yeah, Carolina Central yeah, beat them last yeah, year. Two years yeah. ago, Celebration Bowl. Yeah, but still a compelling matchup, right? I mean, don't don't you think? I mean, I guess the only filthy thing about this is it's going on at that dome, that roller rink in Atlanta. What? Well, it could be a preview of a later game in the season in Atlanta. At that very same stadium, you're saying it's going to be the celebration bowl again. Is what you're saying? Well, well I think Deion forget- Sanders brought in enough talent that Jacksonville State ain't just going, going to fall off. There's so well, many, no, so many I, players. I expect Jacksonville State to be up there. Or, I'm sorry, Jackson State, but South Carolina State only went three and eight last year. So two years ago, they played in the celebration bowl, and then they kind of came crashing back down to earth last year. Can they rebound? Mm. Is the question here? Yeah, yeah, and and I mean. I don't know. Jackson state, you know, I don't even know that they'll win the SWAC uh, to watch out for what Willie Simmons is building down there at Florida A and M. I think that sure. could be a potential or Bubba McDowd Perry view. I thought they were solid last year as well. well we saw Florida A and M play UNC close for at least the first half of that game. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I'm intrigued by this matchup because of it's, you know, it, like I said, two celebration bowls ago it was a great game. Uh, not really a great game. They whooped uh, Dion's ass. They were a big dog, big upset. They were yeah. like a 17 point dog or 14 point dog. They, they, they end up pulling out the win. They did whoop their ass and it was, it was fantastic uh, for, from that point of view. Um, yeah, I like that. I like that Dion didn't uh, just waltz in and fucking handle business. Yeah. The, 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 the Miak had something to say about it. Didn't they? Dude. I mean, what's my guy's name? Uh, the coaching uh, buddy, buddy, uh, these co- Ryan. They, they, no, no, no. The South Carolina state coach has been there for fucking ever, dude. Right? He's been there for like 20 fucking years. Um, he's, he's, uh, I feel like he was an assistant even before that. I think he's been there since like 1998 or something. Oliver Poe is yeah. who I'm saying. Yeah. I mean, oh, they got, Oliver buddy poo. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, he dude, he's, he's, he's one of the longer term uh, FCS coaches. So 146 uh, and 87 all time. That's what I'm talking about. That's a winner. That's what I'm talking about. So give me that as a, as a heater right there. Uh, yeah. Okay. So then it goes, it goes over to myself as I jot down that Patty C played that one. And, uh, you got only two games to choose from. (laughs) Pretty sure I know which one you're going to choose. You got, uh, a game in Montgomery, Alabama, North Alabama, the Lions, who uh, Bowden used to coach the Lions, uh, not Bobby Terry. <laughs> never fade uh, a Bowden in a big game. Never fade That's, a Bowden in a big uh, game. Tale baby. as old as time. They're they're <laughs> taking on the Mercer Bears, who had a great year last year, but a lot of those guys, Fred Payton and company, graduated, right? So they're in a little bit of a rebuild. That game's going on in Montgomery, Alabama, or you got a little in-state battle oh. between Fordham. The Rams. Oh, where's my song? Where is the real capital of New York? Is it in the Bronx where Fordham is or, or is it in Albany? Hey. Vince Lombardi? Where's the Fordham? I mean, come on. Go back to the 30s. They were dominant. I'm waiting for them to throw money into this program and, and get it going again. They should be like, look, if fucking St. John's is able to get Rick Pitino. Why can't Fordham step up their football program and give New York City, New York City, some fucking football action? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about, man. And Albany got one of the greatest names. You know, first off, Albany's been playing football forever too. They got they're the Great Danes. I mean, come on. I understand they haven't been necessarily fire lately, but it wasn't that long ago that they're like go back a decade. They were in the 
they were winning championships. So maybe they, maybe they can bounce back. This is a, this is a rivalry game in state you know, battle. You know why they might bounce back is that last year they started a true freshman and I quarterback and I love FCF FCS quarterback names. Cause this guy Reese Poffenberger, <laughs> <laughs> he threw for over three K 24 touchdowns to just four interceptions as a true freshman last year. So this game was 48-45, four to one last year. So we got a little revenge angle for Albany here. They're at home. Tim, how do you pronounce it? De Moray, De, De, De Demorat. De, Tim Demorat. Tim Democrat is gone. He might get drafted. <laughs> so if anything, and last year De, De, De Morat threw for four sixty four and five Dude. touchdowns against Albany. He shredded the fucking college football world. Yeah, he's gonna be in the NFL. I mean, let, let's he's talk gone. About yeah, let's be honest here. I don't, I, I, let, let's, let's be honest. Stone Labanowitz, right? We only discovered him because he had an amazing name. Did he turn out to be a fucking stud? Yes. Went on the road to Weber State in the FCS playoffs, dealt them a fucking We didn't L. know shit about yeah. Stone Labanowitz. All we knew he has, he, he had a great name. Yeah. But you know what? Within those great same, names. Same with Joe Fagnano. That's right. Are some <laughs> great men. And the FCS has plenty of great men. Tony Musket, who's That's transferred right. into to UVA. Wah -wah. Yeah. There's, there's a long line of great names. So remember Reese Poffenberger, okay? Uh, Reese Poffenberger. <laughs> no one, no one comes into Albany and pushes the Poffenberger around. All right. Uh, I, I, Nick, I had to go in state. So that leaves you. That leaves you. Nothing is over. Nothing. You just don't turn it off. You just don't turn it off because there is just one more game on the slate. I don't know where our draft music is. I, the, everything's all the, the soundboards all uh, whatever. shits everywhere. We, we got it. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm by default. I got North Alabama at Mercer in Montgomery. Colby hates neutral site games, so I'm not surprised he left this for me. Yeah. Yeah, Did a little research on North Alabama. They only won one game last year. They beat yeah. UVA wise 49 17. <laughs> Patty C was let down. He was let down in that one. We're all Taking from Virginia. Down the sister schools. I've yeah. never heard of UVA wise. <laughs> and I looked into it. It's in Wise, Virginia, which I've also never heard of. <laughs> wise, Virginia is about three hours southwest of UVA Blackburn. wise is where the biggest cocksuckers on the planet go. <laughs> You, you, I'm pretty sure of that? that I've heard of it. And Dude, I know I a giant cocksucker know, that went there. I didn't know three hours Southwest of Blacksburg was still the state of Virginia. That's how far it is in that little corner of Appalachia in the mountains of Virginia. Yeah. So that is the exact asshole of America is wise Virginia. Where, where is it <laughs> geographically? It is geographically very Southwest speaking. Virginia, three hours Southwest of Blacksburg. Mm. Which yes, mm. that's surprising. Mm. Virginia How is goes that even far. possible? Yeah, it, my <laughs> thoughts exactly. I thought Virginia Tech touched Tennessee essentially. Yeah, but North Alabama was in some games. Double overtime loss to Kennesaw State, who's jumping to the FBS next year. Three point loss at Eastern Kentucky. Three point loss to Austin P was pretty good. Uh, one score game with Tennessee Tech. Look, you could try and put as much lipstick on this pig as you want. <laughs> Uh, Alabama and Georgia being right next to it. great FBS rivalry. Fucking amazing. But even this Northern Alabama on the Northwest corner of Alabama and Mercer kind of in the center of uh, Georgia, five hours and 22 minutes is the closest drive you can make on Google maps right now. It's not regional. There's nothing good about this game, but we're still going to watch it. We're still going to watch it because it's fucking football. <laughs> All right. And that concludes our week zero draft. All right. I'm excited got, for all of these matchups. We got like 10 minutes. You want to do a couple hat questions or not, yeah. not questions, hat, hot takes. There you go. Do a hat hop take hashtag hat takes hat takes. Yes, exactly. Road Something rash, like that. road rash face hat takes. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I can't play that music or I'll get sued, but yes, let's yeah. go. All They're right, coming guys. for Dundee. Yeah. It's been a little while. We haven't done this in a little bit. We have a bunch of, of hot takes listed, uh, put in this hat here. We're going to pull one out. Shake it up. See what it says. Iowa State will play for the Big 12 championship. Mm. Mm. I mean, th they always lose by like three points, so it's certainly capable. I feel like they never really get blown out of any games. They were starting, uh, you know, they were making the transition from from losing, and clearly you saw Brock Purdy take his team to the NFC Championship. You also saw they had lost uh, not David Montgomery. What was the other running back's name? Reese. 
Brees Hall. Hall. Yeah. So I do expect them to bounce back. Uh, they were four I mean, and eight last year. True. But look at some, some of those. I just remember they got robbed uh, in, in some games there uh, from a refing standpoint. I know that uh, they were furious in, in uh, I think the player got ejected in the uh, Baylor game that had no business getting ejected. Um, yeah. I, you know what? Two years ago, TCU was five and seven. That's right. TCU this year, last year played in the big 12 championship game. Why can't dude, Iowa state dude? Look at these losses last year. Look at these losses. Seven point loss to Baylor, where I believe their safety gets kicked out of the game for nonsense. And then the, the, because they lost their safety to NIL to Ole Miss right before the season, they didn't there. It went to their third string safety, barely attacked it the whole game that. So they lost by one score in that they lost by three to Kansas with several missed field goals. They lost by one to K State, who won the fucking conference, ten to nine. They lost by three to Texas, and again, that was the game they got robbed. That was the game they got Dude, robbed. Last year was the most signature season of any team. Like when when college football needs sexy teams to win to like progress the narrative of like the season. Iowa State was on the butt end of that every fucking week because they're one of the least sexy teams. In college football, yeah, that Texas game was. Ridiculous. That's why we need yeah. to expand the playoffs yeah. so Iowa State doesn't get fucked over every week. They 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 they, uh, they kept it close with with Oklahoma State in Stillwater. They kept it close with Texas Tech one score games. How many is that one score games? Three, four, five, six one score losses. So That's sure, it wouldn't surprise brutal. me. Brutal. Hunter Decker the quarterback returns. Yeah, uh, Hunter hey. Upper Decker. <laughs> you know? Dropped a couple of yeah. those in my life. Yeah. What do you, uh, uh, Patty? See, what do you think? You think would uh, you be shocked at that? The four years prior, eight and five, eight and five, seven and six, nine and three. So he would have to take a jump forward. I'd have to look at this schedule a little more closely. And I do um, think Iowa State is better when they're not expected much. You know, yeah. two years ago, Campbell was the hottest coach out there. They were saying they might win double digit games. Kind of faltered a little bit. Maybe this is right where they want him. I like it. I like it. What do we got else? Good. Dive back into that hat one more time. All right. Let's see what we got here. Hang on. <laughs> Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy ain't walking through that door. Says Dustin Weza. <laughs> it's true. He may be right. Brennan Armstrong it. will be in New York City for the Heisman Trophy announcement. Well, wait. He reunites. With uh, Robert and I, but the problem is he's at NC State, which you know they're born losers. So <laughs> there's a situation. The karma balance there. is out yeah, there. You know, a situation. I do, there. I do think Iveta in the in the chat was asking for the ECU the ECU song. So wow. So you just gonna well make her happy. There we go. Let's go. Let's talk about Iveta. Is is Aveta our hottest uh, fan, buddy? Uh, I'm I don't know. Sure Dee Bettis is pretty hot. Dee Bettis <laughs> yeah. is pretty hot. <laughs> uh, anyway, I mean, let's uh, let's continue on here because look, we're offending fucking f offending fucking oh, fans. She, she's sharp as shit. Let's okay. be honest, but she's very hot. All right. All right. Anyway, All right. this this Sorry. one is great. This one is great. Carson Steele will lead the nation in rushing yards. Oh, Carson Lexington Steele for UCLA. He's got the Fabio look. I could buy into this, especially knowing that. I mean, I guess Oregon State and Utah had good run defenses, but restate the question, please. Is Carson, Carson Steel Lexington Steele can he lead the nation in rushing? UCLA's running back, yeah. the transfer coming over sure. from the back. Yeah, sure. Zach Charbonnet had a hell of a year last year. Oh. I don't think it's. I have a stat there. Charbonnet finished nineteenth and missed a couple of games overall rushing last year. No, oh, I'm buying in. Nice. I'm buying, especially Carson Steele finished Moore. ninth last year. <laughs> my my question here is that Keegan Jones is still at UCLA. I don't think this is going to be a one running back, you know, bell cow situation. This is going to be a little committee here, and we know Chip Kelly did committee two years ago with Charbonnet and, and Britton Brown. So I don't think Carson Steele comes in and gets the carries needed to lead you the nation think, in rushing yard. But UCLA has long, long needed some mojo, some long blonde hair at running back <laughs> in that in that program. And this guy is bringing right, Michael Pratt style. All right, this guy is bringing more back. mojo than UCLA, <laughs> and more specifically UCLA mojo 
than they've had in a long time. And you know what? <laughs> Most of the nation probably doesn't know who Carson Lexington Steele is because he was uh, I playing. I hear there's rumors on the uh, internets. Sorry, continue <laughs> on. He was playing in the MAC last year. So if, if he can light it up at UCLA, he'll get a lot of publicity quickly. He's going to be a celebrity. Uh, you know, you know what, what happened was, you know, Carson Lexington Steele woke up one day, went outside of his apartment in Muncie, Indiana, and goes, I'm dying in this fucking country ass fucked up town. Shit flying in my mouth. The fuck? I can't see power. Let's get the fuck out of this country, mother. <laughs> and then he's like, let's go to Westwood. All right. That's what he did. Nice move. Yeah. Nice move. Uh, uh, and Lexington Steele lives on. All right. Well, that, that does it for our show tonight, guys. Make sure you subscribe to the college football experience because we're back every single day. Of the, uh, you know, we're going to be. Every single game will be covered. Essentially. We've been doing this shit for over five years. Subscribe, tell a friend. Uh, also subscribe to the college basketball experience and the college baseball experience podcast. We come together as one on YouTube, youtube.com slash the college experience. Subscribe, tell a friend. Also check out the sports gambling podcast uh, and the USFL gambling podcast, which we host and the XFL gambling podcast, which I host. So look, football season never ends here at SGPN. All right. So subscribe, tell a friend, check out, uh, give Patty C a follow on Twitter at Patty C831. Give NC Nick a follow on Twitter at NC underscore underscore at ICK. Give me a follow at the Colby D. Also, the college football experience is on Twitter at TCE on SGPN. All right. Until next week, where we look into week one college football. I cannot wait. This is the college football experience. You better start thinking about yours and we out of here. You get ripped apart. Save the cookie cutter mother for 106 apart. Huh? Cause of your liquor will I sip your heart. You never dumb it down, dog. If you're smart, I know about a couple of lines. Fight is a quick to cross. Fish you on a dick to lie. Piss you off, it goes. Tits and bras, lips and jaws. I use my common sense to see the bitch and all. Good thing you got the market corner. Kids and moss. Rip the bag, drop it as you slip and fall off. Another career spear. Thanks for trying to block. You get an A for effort and an effort. Shut the fuck up. Here's a hint. Put down the mic.